Hello, I'm Rupert Turton and welcome to the uh, Business Spotlight interview where we talk to local business owners about their journey. Uh, today, I'm joined by Sarah Cripps, um, who uh, I suppose actually has two businesses. One is Salad Skills, who uh, do apprenticeship recruitment, and the other is a podcast called The Big Balance Theory. Uh, so, Sarah, first of all, welcome along. Thank you very much, Rupert. Thank you. Um, I suppose the first thing to do actually is just uh, just describe what you do at Salad Skills. Okay, so we describe ourselves as apprenticeship specialists. Mm -hmm. We were um, established in 2014 and our primary function then was to do specialised apprenticeship recruitment um, centres. So our passion was to make sure that apprentices had a fair um, selection process and we would work with businesses uh, large and small, who were keen to uh, invest in those processes, if you like, yeah. to attract tech candidates. So what we do is we will focus on the vacancy, we do shortlisting, we do telephone interviews, and the key part of our service is uh, the assessment centres. So we do a range of assessments and um, group assessments, and um, we also do um, psychometric testing if people want that. And oh, then yeah. because of, um, I mean, I'm ex-funding agency and we were approached when the apprenticeship levy came in to offer a service that helps signpost to the training providers. So we do an awful lot around making sure existing employees have access to the right kind of apprenticeship standards. So yeah, so yeah. we're all encompassing yeah. apart yeah. from training. Yeah, and very interesting what you mentioned about the psychometric testing as well. And also um, I, I saw that, uh, you seem to be looking very much on the person's attitude and their values totally. rather than on their skill set, which I found really interesting as well. Yeah, well, the thing is with young people, and especially since COVID, um, they might not have ever worked or had the opportunity to volunteer. So you can't really measure someone on a skill set. And if you just interviewed them, they've not really got a story to tell or they might not mm -hmm. have had careers advice. So it really is about ensuring that it's them that wants the apprentice uh, the apprenticeship program and that we're looking for potential and what's really important is when we do the assessment centers representation has to be there from the employer because they will know the culture that will work best for them and for the individual so yeah, yeah. it's all about the person and their strengths and potential yeah and then the employee and the apprenticeship will train them in the skills they need to develop in their careers yeah and then we'll bring in one of the tra accredited training providers from our approved list yeah to do the training and then we evaluate it so we stay in touch with the apprentice all the way through yeah yeah okay um and then also i know the big change you make during covid was to launch your podcast the uh, the big balance theory just tell yeah. us a little bit about that as well well, basically what happened was obviously it was really sunny and uh, and and the apprenticeship recruitment. I mean, it was it was an awful time. It was it was a career worst in many ways because it was March, April. Our busiest time is March, April, May, because that's when mm -hmm. our clients are recruiting in the main for September starts. So we had lots of assessment centres booked in. We had lots of um, uh, apprenticeship vacancies on the board. And then gradually it was, we need to defer these. So we were ringing candidates saying, I'm sorry, but that post has been deferred until we know what's happening with COVID. Yep. And then obviously the post got cancelled. So we were ringing young people, telling them, I'm really sorry that that, vac that that position is not on offer at the minute because of COVID. And they were yeah. crushed because they were saying, oh gosh, it's horrible. We're, learn we're at home learning. I was really hoping the apprenticeship would still go ahead. Yeah. So there was all that going on and they were awful telephone calls to make. But then I was feeling incredibly well balanced and I couldn't believe it. I thought I should have been panicking that the, you know, the business was, you know, income was shrinking, 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 shrinking. Um, and it made me realise that actually I was appreciating the outdoors more. I was appreciating nature. I had time to think. I had time to reflect. And I realised that my life was way, way too balanced. So I was volunteering on uh, two different committees. I was um, volunteering in it for um, for the running club. I was um, just, life was just manic and it wasn't yeah. balanced. And I thought it was because I was ticking all these boxes that they say we need to tick. So then I, th and then it was, because I was curious and because I had time, I thought, mm, I'll just ring around a load of business people that I know in my circle 
and asked them how they're feeling. So I carried yeah. out this research and things were coming back exactly the same. I appreciate stuff. I appreciate nature. I'm exercising more. I mean, I spoke to um, uh, one uh, cab driver yeah. and he said he had lost four stones in weight during lockdown because he wasn't working. It was a London black cab. Yeah. He was going home. Him and his wife were walking. And now he does a lot less hours. Yeah. Because he wants to maintain going home, spending time with the wife and going for a walk every day. So Excellent. those stories fascinated me. And then one of yeah. the people I interviewed was a Radio 4 producer, Karen Perry. Yeah. And she suggested that I start a podcast, that I interview people. And yeah. that's where it all started. Uh. And it's still going on. Even though the pandemic you know, is over, there are still lots of changes in the workplace and people like to tell their story. So while people want to tell their story and people want to listen to people's stories, we'll just carry on. Yeah, and I think people got into the habit of a new style of living and appreciated what there was more to life than just worse work. And also, I think the, the two ways, actually, there's a work-life balance. Obviously, it's the story of the, uh, the cab driver, but there's also, uh, we call it work-life integration. But the it's basically where, you know, my, I'm, I will literally stop at lunchtime and go cycling for two hours. But that's because that's what I love to do. And I can do the work. I know I can do the work later in the day as well. So but it's, it's guilt free, isn't it? It's guilt free. The thing is, we probably yeah. might have done that before. And as a business owner, I would do things and feel guilty. Yeah. Incredibly guilty if I was taking time away. And um, But now we can have that. I mean, what's really interesting for me, and we are going to be doing a series on how it's impacted the young, because that's my world. That's my area of expertise. Yeah. But young people now, you know, you ask the standard question, what would you like your career to look like in five years? And they're saying, I'd like to be hybrid working. I want to be two days at home and three days um, in the office. And I say, oh, that's really interesting because pre-COVID, no apprentices would ever have said that. And then they're shocked going, really? That's never yeah. happened. So they're, they think that world has always been in existence. Yeah. Well, I suppose that's their, their first exposure to it. Four years is sort of that was their it exposure was building up as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so we still have a lot to learn. So, so since you've been in business, then what's been the biggest issue you've had to overcome? Aside from COVID. Uh, aside from COVID, yeah, obviously COVID does. I suppose um, universal. What's things. the biggest issue we've had to overcome? Um, do you know what? I think we're really lucky because we, I, I we what we do is great and we all love it and we're all passionate about recruiting apprentices yeah. i think i wouldn't necessarily call it an issue um but the barriers that's making it harder to find apprentices i think is the lack of government awareness or not Ooh. government awareness sorry lack of promotion by the government so we used to yeah. have tv campaigns there used to be radio yeah. campaigns there doesn't seem to be a lot so not all young people or employers are aware that apprenticeships are available. Yeah. They might also have had not a not so good experience mm -hmm. and then it puts them off. Yeah. So they're the kind of micro issues, if you like. Um, but yeah, as a business, COVID was the big one, but we actually managed to grow in the end during COVID because yeah. we carried on recruiting yeah. and we had organisations tell us that um, they paid as a retainer fee to make sure we stayed in business oh, after good. the pandemic. So we were very lucky. Yeah. That also says a lot about your client base as well, though, doesn't it? In incredibly, yeah. And, and for us, values is really important in our business. So for us, yeah. especially with apprentices, so we will get calls from organisations who want us to recruit apprentices and we make sure that they want to take them on for the right reason, that it mm. isn't necessarily about having a cheap head count bill. Yeah. Now yeah. It, it is cost effective and for a smaller business who wants to grow, it's a great way for them to yeah. grow talent and also not cost them a lot of money. So we get that, you know, we take on apprentices ourselves. So yeah. So going off at a slight tangent, what's been your biggest learning then since you've been a big uh, a business owner? My biggest learning I think well, I'm going to say the first thing that comes to my head is the biggest learning is you don't, it's okay to ask for help. I think when you're the boss and you're the MD, yeah. I think you think that you have to know everything. 
Mm. And also what's really important is to reach out and ask for help. I think that's the biggest learning curve. And I think the learning curve as well is I will still have an element of imposter syndrome. Mm. And the learning there is that most business owners have imposter syndrome. But I think for me, it's about reaching out. So I'm really lucky. I'm in a group called MD to MD. Yep. Um, and so that's good. And their motto is it can be lonely at the top. And so there's mm. a group of, so I think the learning for me is find the time to go to these groups or, you know, have coaching and you might think yep. your day's too busy to have coaching or mentors, but it's so important that you do. We all know this as successful business people, we know you have to step out of the business. Yeah. But we don't. So it's about building time for that. And what I've learned for COVID. So in September, I am taking a month off. I'll still be working. I'm going to yep. be in France and I'm going to do some strategizing for the business. Yeah. And I know that's really important. Yeah. 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 Guilt yeah, free. So- Guilt free. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, again, I'm big support. I mean, multiple things you've said there. I'm a big supporter of um, apprenticeships for for people as well. I think not everybody is suited to academic education. So I think apprenticeships really serve a, a very important role. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they've got a great reputation in the UK, which is really sad. The um, uh, But also actually just the time to think about your business and getting out of the business is so important. And obviously with our clients, we encourage them to uh, to get out and spend every week. They need to be spending time thinking about the business and getting out of the business like you're doing and actually working out what they're yeah. trying to do with the business is just so important to its success mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So what, what are your aspirations for uh, salad skills in the next five years then? Well, our aspirations are, so I relocated um, personally to Wales. So yep. we now have our offices in Market Harbour and then we have offices in Monmouth now. So mm-hmm. in terms of aspirations, um, I want to grow business really um this area. So Hereford, Gloucester, Worcester. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as maintain the, the you know the clients that we've got because we work nationally well england wide yeah um so we do a, quite a lot of work in london and um, so that's great but yeah so i think it is and just continuing what we're doing we've just invested a lot in um, new assessment tools so we're using stem kits now for our yep. assessment centers which are going really well and uh, just carry on doing what we're doing really um yeah. and just not taking um our eyes off the ball i guess really and then uh, yeah, yeah see what happens so, so no big plans for the business just a nice steady just to grow it steadily yeah just yeah. to grow you know i don't want to go all out um i i still have a hands-on um um link with the assessment centers because i love doing that i love oh, really? being my own boss and i love yeah, being, yeah. i love managing people but if we grow yeah. the business too much i'll end up spending my time managing all the people and not doing what i love which is assessment center days yeah no absolutely cool and then what about for the uh, big balance theory where's that going oh well do you know if i'm being honest i would love to get sponsorship for it so we yeah. were very lucky we won a small grant of money from harbour district council um yeah. which has funded some episodes um we are going to be focusing as i alluded to earlier specifically on apprenticeships and the impact that COVID's had on on this generation and yeah. really to learn how we how employers can look you know attract them look after them uh, you know retain them you know yeah. what is it is because there is a mixed match as well i mean even now lots of there'll be studies out there that say there's no opportunities for young people well we've got lots of opportunities for young people and so my frustrations are sometimes that people apply and then they don't pick yeah. up the phone when they're called Oh, or yeah. they do a terrible application form. So yeah. really for big balance, it's let's see how that goes. And yeah, it it would be great to get sponsorship for it. Um, because it it, it there's there's lots of good good stuff there. But yeah, we'll yeah. see. Yeah. So what would you say to anyone thinking of going into business for themselves? You've obviously been through the journey at least at least twice with the um with salad skills and with the uh with the, with the big balance theory. So um <laughs> my advice is um you know, everybody wants to give you the advice that you need to make sure there's a market out there for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, don't set out the business because you think you're going to be rich or have loads of free time. You know, when I set out the business, I thought, oh, do you know what? I'll have Fridays off. That didn't last yeah. long. Yeah. Um, and for me, the biggest advice I give to people is if you if you genuinely want to set up your business, 
do what I did and I saved up a year's worth of salary. Mm, yep. So that I didn't have to worry about chasing income work um, yeah. on that first year. Um, but yeah, just just go for it. Yeah, and don't procrastinate. You know, do all the things that good practices are, like do your marketing plan yeah. and all of that. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm so pleased that I did the um, the salary. So I didn't have to worry financially. I could just focus on doing what I love and growing the business. Yeah. And also, of course, it allows you the time to work out what you're doing as well, doesn't it? No, let's face it. Yeah. No one's going to start their own business and get it right on day one. No, no. Yeah. So who's the first person that comes to mind when you think about success? <gasps> Who's the first person? That's a really good question. Who's the first person that comes to mind when I think about success? Um, does it have to be somebody we all know? That had a no, well-known person? No, no, some no. So I, I ask this question virtually every every time we do the uh, the business spotlight. Well, the fact so I, I will ask dramatically that from people in the <laughs> public eye right down to somebody you know, right down to somebody they knew, somebody they worked for historically, yeah. family. Well, the thing is with me, and I'm thinking, you know, the thing is with me with the podcast as well is, um. I want to interview people that are real people that we can relate to. So yeah. the first person that's come to mind for me is a woman called Helen Wilson. Mm -hmm. And Helen Wilson um, is MD of Metso Consultancy. Yeah. And Helen set her business up. Oh, I don't even know when it was. But then, so I think it would be in the 90s. And then Helen asked me to join. Yeah. And said, um, but what she did was she said, I've set this business up. I would love you to come in and work for me. I haven't yep. got a position yet, but I'm just giving you the heads up there that yep. I would love you to work for me because you're just what I would need as a, you know, an account director, yeah. account manager rather. So then that did happen and I went on board. But Helen was a, is a fantastic businesswoman. She's so organized, but Helen taught me vision boards. Oh, yeah. So Helen would do her marketing plan and then she would do it visually. Yep. And then so we would have in the office, you know, these visual boards of what she wanted to achieve in the business but yeah. what Helen did is treated me as a person and said okay she taught me to do dream boards for me what did I want to achieve out of my life yeah so she was in the very much in the early days this is an individual I'm not just looking at how she can benefit my business but I want her to grow as a person yeah so that helps her so yeah that's who I would say um Helen has has, has been that that key person who I would say has been really successful. And she was very quality driven. And Helen taught yeah. me that um, if you focus on quality, profits will follow. Yeah, no, I agree with that as well. I like the fact that she's um, the, um, the, the aberration comes through that her focus on, on people as well. It's not through chasing the numbers. It's through looking after your staff and then your staff yeah. will look after your customers and then, goes full circle doesn't it and the customers look after your business and round you go again so yeah it's a, a, yeah. a, a, a virtuous circle to say the mm. least. and it's great to have that opportunity actually because i've never ever, ever reflected on that nobody's ever asked me that question yeah. and so it's been good to reflect and i need to get in touch with helen now and tell her <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah, yeah she'd love to hear it as well it's mm -hmm. amazing actually yeah just to tell them the influence she made on on your career subsequently totally yeah so it's been lovely talking to you today um, and you, Rupert. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll put your details. If anyone wants to contact you, I'll add those uh, details into the into the uh, description that that goes with this uh, this episode. Uh, so if anyone needs to contact you, they'll we'll know how to do it. But thank you for your time today. Being lovely talking to you, really interesting as well. And you, thank you, Rupert. Best of luck.